For some weeks now on Sundays, we've been uh, on the subject of the Lord, my healer. And our main text has been Exodus 15 and 26. We'll look there again and review just a little bit. If you haven't been with us, then uh, the previous message and ministry is available. You can get it online. You can get hard copies at the Word Supply here and in Branson. And uh, there's, there's a couple of areas you need to feed your faith on regularly. And it's healing and provision. Because uh, uh, these things, we, we face them, we deal with them on a regular basis. I mean, if your body's not in good working condition, it affects every area of your life. And if you don't have provision to meet your needs, it affects you. And can enough sickness in your body can imprison you. Yes, sir. And enough poverty can imprison you. But, you know, when, when the Lord delivered His people out of Egyptian bondage, the Scripture said, after all of the mighty signs and, and wonders that happened, the psalmist said it like this. He said, He brought them out with silver and with gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. All of this is typical for what we have in Jesus in the new birth in the new covenant. 1 Corinthians 10 tells us that it's typical and examples of. And the uh, first thing they needed after they coming out of Egypt is a type of coming out of the world and out of the oppression of being lost in darkness. And the first thing that happened to them is they got money and they got healed. Amen. Now they're ready to accomplish the will of God. They used that silver and gold to build that tabernacle. We talked about that during a week of increase. But they had to be able to do the thing, to take the land. You had to have strength and ability. And so uh, the enemy will try to keep you from being effective in your generation by keeping you sick and broke. But if you got plenty of money and you're healthy and feel good, you're ready. Can you see that? To go anywhere the Lord tells you. Do anything He tells you to do. Say it out loud. I will not allow, will not allow the, devil me the devil to imprison me with sickness, with sickness or, poverty or poverty because I'm redeemed. Because I'm redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you? Yes. We've been redeemed yes. from the curse of the law, Galatians 3 says, and that includes sickness and poverty. Amen. Now, you know, people mock us and don't realize they're mocking the Word of God. That's why some people call it cult. Is because they, they call us that health and wealth gospel. Well, gospel means good news. Amen. And sick ain't good news. Amen. And broke ain't good news. Amen. And how does it help you for me to be sick and broke? If I was sick, I couldn't make it to church to minister to you. How does that help you? We don't. Hmm? If we're so broke, we don't have a place to meet in and can't keep the lights on. How does that help anybody? Well, how does you being sick help anybody? Or broke? No, sickness is not of God. Poverty is not of God. There are people starving to death on the planet for lack of a decent meal to eat. That's poverty to its extreme. Well, maybe you got a meal to eat, but you can't keep your electricity on. That's the same ugly, evil stuff, just a lesser degree of it. Come on, can you see it? Poverty is evil. And it's not of God. Not his plan, not his will. It's why Jesus became poor, the Bible said, so that you could be made rich. And sickness is not the perfect will of God. He took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses. He carried our pains. He revealed himself long ago in Exodus 15, 26, as the Lord that healeth thee. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. The Amplified says, I am the Lord who heals you. 
the uh, Young's literal says, I, Jehovah, am healing thee. The CEV says, I am the Lord your God and I cure your diseases. This is one of those great compound redemptive names, Jehovah Rapha, the self-existent one who cures you, who mends you, who fixes you. Amen. The one, these one of these great I am names. Amen. Who has a right to say, yeah, he used to be, but he's not anymore. The I am is and will always be Amen. the I am. He is the Lord who heals us. Say it out loud. He is, he is. the Lord who heals me. The Lord, who heals the Lord my healer. You know, just like you receive Jesus as your Savior, you need to receive Him as your healer. And you need to receive Him as your provider. And you need to receive Him as the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. And you need to receive Him as your protector. How many believe He can do it all? He has done it all, and He can manifest it all. But we have to receive it. Now, we saw also in Jeremiah, don't turn to these, but Jeremiah 17, 14, I'm reviewing. He said, heal me now. Heal me, O Lord, and I'll be healed. Save me, and I'll be saved. Psalm 103 said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget, and all that's within me, he, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Do we believe this? Yes, sir. See, a lot of church going people, they completely believe, they are fully persuaded that God forgives all iniquities. But they are not fully persuaded that He heals all diseases. They'll say, well, you know, no, it's not always His will. Well, if it's not always His will to heal, how do you know it's not always His will to forgive? We don't decide whether Jesus is the Savior or not depending on who gets born again and who doesn't. Do we? There are billions of people on the planet who are not saved. But it doesn't change the fact that Jesus is the Savior of all men, but like Timothy says, especially of them that believe. It is His will that they be saved, that they be born again, but they must believe it and receive it. Well, just like we don't decide whether Jesus is Savior and it's His will for all to be saved based on who is saved or not, we don't decide if Jesus is healer and if it's His will for all to be healed based on who gets healed or not. It is His will. Whether anybody receives it or not, it's still His will. Say it out loud. He forgives, he forgives. All, all my iniquities. And He heals all, all my diseases. Come on, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Jesus said, ministering um, to the individual that they came and broke off the roof and let the man down. He said, uh, your sins are forgiven. And the religious leaders were upset. And they said, who is this that forgives sin? Now this is interesting because back then when Jesus walked on the earth, they believed He could heal but didn't think He could forgive. Now, decades, uh, you know, centuries later, people have turned it around. They believe He can forgive but not sure about healing. But the Lord looked at them and said, when they got upset about him saying, your sins are forgiven, he said, well, which one's easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say rise up and walk? I'm glad he didn't say which one's harder, <laughs> which one's easier. Is it true that it's just as easy to receive a healing as it is to receive forgiveness? Yes. That was weak. Thank you for those three yeses. 
Now there's a reason why I keep going over this again and again. Because tradition has been taught instead of the word. We, most people have not been taught that it's God's will for everybody to be healed. And it's easy to receive healing. Most people have not been taught that. They've been taught sometimes God's working out something in your life through this disease. I mean all kind of you know, things that are contrary to the scriptures. But it's no more his will for us to be sick than it is for us to be in sin. Amen. And it's no harder to receive a healing than it is to receive forgiveness. According to Jesus, the head of the church. Now you're going to believe him or a bunch of folks that spent too much time at the library? Huh? Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Which one is easier? Well, what he's saying is there's no difference. Both healing and forgiveness were provided in the same act of redemption. Amen. And they're both received the same way through faith. One is no harder than the other. Now, the, one of the things that we've got to overcome, though, is the walking by sight. Because the thing is, you can't see forgiveness. So you can assume. But with healing, you can see that, right? You can see whether that's there or not. And that's why it's such a big deal of walking by sight. If you don't see it, then people tend to think, well, it's not there. Because I don't see it. I don't feel it. It's not there. Forgiveness, who knows? <laughs> but the truth is, they are the same. Now, go with me to Romans 4, and let's talk some more about this. Romans 4 and verse 16. If we receive by faith forgiveness and healing, and we do, there is no better picture of how faith works than the one who is called the father of faith, Abraham. And we're given detail in Romans 4, verse 16, about how he and Sarah received one of the greatest miracles in their life, the birth of a child, of Isaac. In Romans 4, 16, it says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. God truly is no respecter of persons. He's made all of his blessings available to anybody anywhere on the basis of grace and faith. It doesn't matter where you were born, how much education or lack. It doesn't matter your complexion, your gender, your age. None of that makes any difference. If you will believe him, come on, are you listening? If you will believe him and receive from him, he will do things for you that most of the planet is not experiencing. Thank you, Jesus. They make any difference where you come from, Amen. who Amen. knows you, who don't. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all to see. Not just those that are of the law. I mean, most of us can't trace our lineage. Naturally to Abraham. We're a mix. Amen. Amen. That's why racism is so ignorant. The very thing you think you don't like, you is one. Amen. <laughs> you, you don't know what you are. You're so mixed up. <laughs> it's It's ignorance. But the Galatians goes on to talk about in Christ, there's, there's no 
Jew, there's no Gentile, there's no male, there's no female. None of that matters when it comes to receiving from God. None of it matters. And we couldn't, you know, most of us could not trace anything back to say we're part of God's covenant people through the seed of Abraham, but by faith in Jesus, my family tree is easy to keep up with them. I am born of God. Jesus is my big brother. And if you don't think that carries some weight, you don't know. Hallelujah. None of the rest of it makes any difference. Verse 17, as it's written, talking about Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations whom before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things that be not as though they were. And we're going to take some time and go, go look at this. Against hope, Abraham believed in hope. Now, another way of saying that is there, there was no reason for hope. But he believed, hope, the, the Bible word hope doesn't mean what we use in modern vernacular. A lot of people, when they say, I hope so, they don't mean what this is talking about. They mean, I wish. I want it to be. I wish it would be. That's not what the word hope means in the Bible. The word hope in the Bible means confident expectation. Amen. You're expecting something. Amen. Well, he didn't have any reason to expect anything. But he, he expected anyway because his faith that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall your seed be. Keep going. Being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he, God, was able also to perform. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Keep going. Now it's not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. Verse 24. But for us also. Everybody say, me too. Amen. Me too. To whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Do you believe on him? Now, just uh, going back to this, in fact, go, go back to Genesis 17 while, while I'm talking about this. What's this got to do with healing? Everything. Everything. Because we receive it by faith, and obviously, Abraham, father of faith. But also, what, ha what they were believing for that's specifically mentioned right here was miraculous changes in their bodies. Weren't they? That's what had to happen for this to come to pass. Miraculous changes in Abram, Abraham and Sarah's physical body. And how they received it works the same way today. You receive it just like they did and he gives us them as an example for us to follow. Let's go back and look at it, see how it happened. Genesis 17. You got time for this? This morning? Might as well. How many think we ought to give the Lord undivided attention at different periods in our day and week and and life, and if you're if you if you're ready to go by the time you get there, you know what's the point of going? Something should be accomplished, right? We we should minister to him, the Lord, something that he'd receive, and then we should receive from him what he wants to minister to us. In Genesis 17 and verse one, it says, "When Abram was ninety years old and nine." Somebody say 99. 99. <laughs> Almost 100. Abram is 99. The Lord appeared to Abram 
And he said to him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now this word perfect doesn't mean flawless. It means wholehearted. I won't take time to get into that, but there are language issues here. Verse 2, I'll make my covenant between me and you and multiply you exceedingly. How many know God is the God of increase? He always wants to increase us in every good thing. Uh, I'll make my covenant between me and you and multiply you exceedingly. Keep going down through verse 6 for now. Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant's with you and you'll be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name any more be called Abram, and we're not pronouncing it correct the way the Hebrew is, but you know what I'm talking about. But your name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made you. Oh, I'm getting stirred up. This is what Romans 4 is talking about, that God called him the father of many nations before he was, before they had a child. Come on, can you say, this is how God works. And God functions by faith. And that's why we say faith calls things that be not, that are not yet in the natural, as though they already were. He didn't say, soon I'm going to make you the father of many nations. What did he say? He said, Abram, Abram, we are changing your name, buddy, today. You are no longer Abram. You are Abraham, which meant father of many nations. And I'm changing your name because I have already made you a father of many nations. Hallelujah. Just talk, the reason I said I'm getting excited, you are too, just talking about these things touches something in our spirit because this is what we were made from. You know what you're sitting on? Faith. You know what the building is sitting on? Faith. You know what the planet is revolving on? Everything in existence was created by the faith of God. He conceived it in himself and he spoke and said, light be, hallelujah, and light is. I mean, your body, everything that you see and feel was created by the force of faith. And the same force that created us can easily fix our bodies. Amen. Affect our provision and finances. Affect everything around about us because it's the force that all this was created from to start with. Now there's two big things that Abraham did that allowed the power of God to change his body and Sarah's body to be changed. She had faith of her own. Hebrews 11 says, she wasn't just riding on Abram's faith. Hebrews 11 says, Sarah herself had faith and received strength to conceive seed when she was past age. She believed God. Though as we'll see, neither one of them started off believing God. So there's hope for us. Two big things. Everybody awake? This is life changing, friends. Two big things Abraham did that allowed the power of God to make such miraculous changes in him and Sarah. Number one is he called himself what God called him. When it didn't look like it, 
when it didn't feel like it, when, it, when there was no hope in the natural that it could ever be that way, he agreed with God and called himself the father of many nations when they got no child. Looks like they're way too old to ever have a child. Come on, can you see this? He went ahead and agreed with God and accepted his new name and told all his staff, told Sarah, don't call me Abram anymore. God has changed my name. And he's not just changing his tag, he's changing who he is. He's changing what he is, and this is what we got to get a hold of. People have thought names don't mean anything, words don't mean anything. God will change a word to change a thing. If he calls the bitter sweet, it quits being bitter. If he calls the sick healed, if he calls the poor rich, if he calls the bound free, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. If you got any, uh, if you got any cars, any vehicles, that are not paid for. You need to change its name. It's no longer a Chevy. Or a Ford. Or a Toyota. What kind of car you got? A paid for. It's a 2001 paid for. 2010 paid for. What, what are we talking about? I call it. I call it. Before you see it, before you could ever know, even if you don't see any way it could be. What style house is that? It's a paid for. I call it paid for. We got to rename some things. It's not your weak eye. My weak eye. If you say so. My, my bad knee. If you call it that, you're locked into it. Hmm? My tennis elbow, my bad back. We must stop this and believe what the Word says, what God has said about the power of faith-filled words, that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Am I quoting Scripture, saints? Then you got to speak to it. It's not your diseased heart. Huh? Come on, name it, name it, name it. Re, rename it. If you want to change it, you've got to change the name. Two big things that Abraham did that changed he and Sarah's life. Two big things that allowed the power of God to come in and do a miracle in their old bodies Amen. that people would have thought could not happen, but it did. Yeah. I said, but it did. Yeah. Even if medical science says there is no cure, there is no help for that, you, that can't be fixed. Well, they can't fix it, That's right. That's right. but God can. Amen. I said, but no, no, don't you misunderstand. We thank God for doctors and medicine, and we're, we're fighting the same thing. They're doing it with a natural means. But don't think because there is no natural help that there is no help. Because all things are possible with God and with him or her that believes. But believing involves calling. Amen. Calling. I call that car paid for. I call that house paid for. I call it paid off. Right? What do you mean, the, the money's already at the bank? No, I didn't say that, no. I believe I receive it. Hmm? If I had already received it, I wouldn't have to believe I received it. 
Hmm? Oh, you mean you have no more symptoms in your body? I didn't say that. If you hurt, you hurt. That's real. But I said, I call my body healed. I call my kidneys sound. I call my lungs clear. Oh, friend, if you say it in faith, power is released. If you believe it, power is released. I call my skin clear. See, people get locked into stuff. No, I've tried everything and nothing works. And I'm allergic to this. If you say so. I can't eat this. If you say so. It makes me sick every time I eat it. It makes me, if you say so. You could say something else. I said you could say something else. But notice when faith says this, it says it when it doesn't look like it. When it looks like there's no way it can happen. Abram's 99. Sarah's 90. She couldn't conceive when she was 20. Never had a child. Now, she's gone through the change of life. Abram's 99. Can you imagine him and her going to the doctor? (laughs) Saying, we're just going to get a checkup because we're thinking about having a baby. (laughs) And if they had listened to the natural side of it, they would have come away thinking, There's no way. You're dreaming. But against hope, he believed in expectation that what God said, he was well able. Oh, somebody say, well able, well able, well able. Is God well able to fix your body? Is he well able? Well able. So what's the first thing we're talking about? What did he do? Look at it again. He called. Neither shall your name anymore be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. And this this hasn't happened yet in the natural. But as far as God's concerned, it's done. Because when he says it, We've got to think like he thinks. Don't have to see it for it to be done. I don't have to feel it for it to be done. I don't have to see the money. Verse 6, I will make you exceeding fruitful. I'll make nations of you and kings will come out of you. And the reason Abraham is in the book is because he just said, yes, sir. I believe it. He's got no other reason to believe it except the best reason that ever existed. God said so. Skip on down to the 18th chapter. Excuse me, I'm moving too fast. 17, 15. 17, the 15th verse, 17th chapter, please. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, You shall not call her name Sarai. Back up, I I didn't finish reading it, please. But Sarah, or Sarah, shall her name be. Why do you need to do this? Is God just doing something whimsical? No. No. Is what happened in their bodies tied to this. That's what many have not understood. They thought, well, he changed their name. That's interesting. But they don't see it's how he got their bodies changed. I'll bless her and give you a son of her. I'll bless her and she'll be a mother of nations. Just like you, a father of nations, she'll be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. She's 90. Couldn't conceive when she's 20. 
And how does God fix this? Changes her name. Now, modern man doesn't think that way, do they? They don't think that way at all. But we are the people of God. We need to get our minds renewed so that we think like he does. If we want to get his results, we've got to agree with him. We've got to work with him. Not try to make him do it the way we think it ought to be done. People are begging God all over the planet. Good people, good saved people, please heal me, please heal me, please heal me. That's not what he said to do. That's not how it works. Begging doesn't work. Believe, begging's not believing. The Lord told us to believe. And if you're begging, you're not believing. David said, I've been young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Thank God, God is such a God, he don't want us to beg. And since he's everything, we don't have to beg. We don't need to beg. In fact, we're missing it if we do. Please, 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 please is not what he said to do. It's the opposite of what he said to do. How many think millions of Christians, that's what they're doing? We've done it too. But thank God for the light of his word. The truth will make you free. Where are we? Keep going. Abraham fell on his face and laughed. That don't sound good. He said in his heart, so he didn't say it out loud. But how many of the Lord knows what you say in your heart? Amen. Shall a child be born to him that's a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that's 90 years old bear? He thought that was impossible. Abraham, our great father of faith is having a moment. <laughs> is that right? He, he's not doing good right here. He's laughing at God and God wasn't telling a joke. <laughs> he's laughing at him. Verse 18, Abram said to God, all oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God, we've already got this. You know, Sarah's handmaid has had a, had a child now of mine, and we're good to go. We got a kid. Let's just use him. Oh. <laughs> and 19, God said, okay, we'll do it your way. <laughs> no. He's not going to tell you that either. <laughs> he said, no, no, Abraham, Sarah your wife is going to bear you a son for real. <laughs> Indeed. For sure. And you're going to call his name Isaac. Already got him named. God's naming stuff. Right and left. He named, renamed Abram, renamed Sarai, and named Isaac, and he ain't been conceived yet. This is how faith does. I'll establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Now he's talking about generations to come out of a baby that ain't been conceived yet. From a 99-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman that couldn't conceive when she's 20. But God's not bothered by all that. Verse, verse 20, as for Ishmael, I've heard you. I've blessed him. I will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. Sounds like the Lord just bless everybody if they'd let him. Right? Oh, yeah. Verse 21, my covenant I'm going to establish with Isaac. Sarah's going to bear to you at this set time next year. Next year. Next year. We're going to have a baby. 22, and he left off talking with him. 
Why? Well, he's laughing at him. God went up from Abraham. Conversation's over. Now Abraham gets to think about this. Skip to chapter 18, verse 9. 18, 9. After this, the Lord comes in angels and visits Abram. And Abraham invited them to eat and stay. And while they're sitting there, he said, where's Sarah, your wife? He said, behold, she's in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door. Now, he's already changed her name. Something's been working in her. For months now, her body's changing. In fact, if you read this whole story, you'll see that the king wanted her. Well, the king in those days had his pick of the most beautiful women in the land, and he wants Abram, Abraham's 90-year-old wife. Really? Really? Something's going on here. How I many of something's going on here? Amen. So, tell your neighbor, something's going on. Can you see, why are we talking about this? The Lord's our healer. The Lord's the one who mends us, Amen. who fixes us, who restores us, who makes us whole. He's always been this. He will always be this. How did it happen with Abraham and Sarah? first thing he did was change their names. Change what they were calling themselves and calling each other and calling the situation. If the Lord can't get a hold of your mouth, if he can't get you to change what you're saying, you'll be robbed and I'll be robbed. But are you willing yes. to agree with him? Yes. And if he called you rich, don't look at your checking account. Come on, if he calls you blessed, don't look at your previous experience. Come on, if he calls you healed, don't check your symptoms. Don't check the doctor's report. If he calls you healed, if he calls you free, don't check your cravings or your impulses or your habits or it. Just agree with him. And rename yourself. Yeah. Come on, are you with me? Yeah. And start calling yourself what he calls you and agree that he is right and everything else that disagrees with it is wrong. Yeah. I don't care how real it is and how bad it feels, it can't be right if it contradicts him. So I got a choice. You got a choice. Am I going to call myself what all of this is calling me or am I going to call myself what he calls me? He's, ever since Jesus went to the cross, the Father's been calling us righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. And holy. Amen. And what's most of the church calling themselves? Poor, pitiful, failure, just an old sinner, saved by grace. Well, come on, have you been saved or not? If you are, then you're not just an old sinner anymore. You've been saved. And Jesus has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. Am I quoting scripture? We need to agree with God, calling ourselves what he has said. He has made us to be. And the moment we get in agreement with him, oh boy, when we get in agreement with him, Things line up. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And things begin to change and come in line with what he has already said. Yes. So I'm going to call my body healed. I'm going to call my body strong. I'm going to call my immune system very strong. I'm going to call my blood clear and clean. 
and my lungs clear and clean and my heart clear and clean and strong and normal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to live a long time and the Lord tarries his coming. He's going to satisfy me with long life. And whatever happens, I mean, it's easy. Somebody said, yeah, but it runs in my family. How about used to? Why not stop it in your generation and not pass it on to your kids and grandkids? Come on, are you with me? Do you think God can't tweak your DNA? What would it take for him? Wouldn't have to lift his little finger. What he does have to do is get you and I to agree with him. Mama, are you okay? Oh boy, what happened to the time? Yikes. I'm not done. Can you come back? Can you come back? Well, let's finish reading our, our chapter here and then we'll, we'll say to be continued. Sarah heard it in the tent door that was behind him. She heard the Lord say, Sarah's going to have a son. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, stricken in age. When the Bible says you old, you old. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. She's gone through the change of life. She's, she's no longer in her reproductive years. And as we've already said, she couldn't conceive when she was 25. Never had a child. It ceased to be. So 12. Therefore, because, therefore, therefore what? Because of her not being able to conceive when she's young and because she's gone through the change of life as a woman and because she's 90 years old, when she hears about her having a baby, she laughs. Well, this ain't no different than what Abraham did. She said, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? Now this is what First Peter refers to that Sarah called Abraham Lord talking about respect. Verse 13, And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Now she also did it within herself. She's not making noise back there. She laughed within herself. And he said, Why did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything. That's where this phrase comes from that we, we banner around and quote so much. Oh, how did, does this do anything for you? I ought to preach this to myself this morning. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Come on, sit out loud. Is anything, anything, is anything too hard for the Lord? Well, if it's not, then that thing that you thought couldn't be done, it can be done. That thing that experts told you couldn't happen, it can happen. It can happen. That thing you thought was gone 20 years ago, 40 years ago, and could not possibly happen, it can happen. He said, at the time appointed, I'll return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Why? We already got her name changed. She's been calling herself mother of many nations for months now. God's got something to work with. He said, it's happening. It's happening. Verse 15, Sarah denied. <laughs> she lied. She said, I didn't laugh. She's embarrassed now and, and afraid. And the Lord said, no, you did laugh. 
She might have been trying to be technical. I didn't laugh out loud. <laughs> he said, you laughed. You laughed. <laughs> There's hope for all of us. If these great father and mother of faith, these great patriarchs got off to such a rocky start, but then got it together later, you and I can get it together. Is that right? We can quit laughing, we can quit scoffing, we can quit mocking, and we can get serious about this and zero in on this and agree with God and get some miracles. Look at the 21st chapter. Just a few verses here and then I think we're done. Genesis 21 and 1. 21 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. How many know the Lord always does what he said? Never failed one time, never will. And the Lord did to Sarah as he had spoken. You know, that's how Mary conceived Jesus without an earthly father. She said, be it unto me according to your word. She agreed with him. He said, the, the Holy Spirit's going to come on you and overshadow you. And she, she heard that. And how could that happen? But she just in simple childlike faith said, okay, be it unto me according to your word. Everybody say that out loud. Be it unto me, be it unto me. According, to your word. according to your word. You don't have to understand it. You just have to receive it. Agree with him. And the Lord did to Sarah as he had spoken. Keep reading. And Sarah conceived. I don't know if we understand the full import of this. She did what? Conceived. How old is she? I guess maybe even 91 by now, right? Right, I mean, huh? Yeah. Couldn't conceive when she was 20? She did what? Conceived. She did what? Something happened in her body, her organs. Is that right? Her reproductive organs, her bones, her blood. Come on, something, something happened in her, didn't it? And who's, who's the daddy? Who's the baby daddy? No, not, not this hundred-year-old guy. Yep. What? Yep. No. Yep. <laughs> At the set time of which God had spoken to him. Keep going, keep going. And Abraham called the name of his son. They already got the name. They didn't have to pick out a name. That was born to him whom Sarah bore to him. Whom he laughed about when God said Sarah is going to be the mother. They called him Isaac. Which means laughter. And verse 4 Abraham circumcised his son Isaac being eight days old, just like God told him to. Verse 5, and Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac, his son, Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has made me to laugh. <laughs> but it's a different laugh. Oh, come on, can you God's got a sense of humor. Doesn't he? He said, you laugh at me? i show you how to laugh. Right? So she's laughing now. Abraham's laughing. Everybody around the house is laughing. Huh? But they're not laughing in unbelief. They're not laughing because it's impossible for it to happen. They're laughing because God did exactly what he said he would do, even though it seemed so impossible. All that hear me will laugh with me. All that hear will laugh with me. Verse 7, she said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would have given children suck? She's nursing this baby. Something happened to her body. Right? Yeah. Something. <laughs> Woo. I have borne him a son in his old age. 
Don't you know when they saw strangers, people said, what, this, is this your great-grandchild? <laughs> great-grandbaby. She said, no, I'm, I'm nursing him. This is our son. What? 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 How do you get things that nobody in the world is getting? How do you get things that seem utterly impossible? One of the big things that they did is they called themselves what God called them when it completely disagreed with all of their experience and all of their symptoms and all of their circumstances and the very laws of nature. Against hope, they believed. Anyway, in expectation that if God said it, he could flat do it. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. 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 Who would have said? Who would have said? We've seen these things on a smaller scale. Who would have said all our projects paid off in one night? Right? Who would have said that God would just give us things and pay for it? And we've had a lot of healings recently. Who would have said that your body would be in that kind of shape and then you can be healed and live for decades after that? Sound. We're going to see a lot more of it. Verse 8. And the child grew and was weaned and Abraham made a great feast. When Isaac was weaned, grew into a man, carried on in the covenant of God, because all things are possible with God and with them that believe. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Stand on your feet, everybody.